and welcome to this week's Monday Musings. Today it is just me. Uh, Marcus is enjoying some well-earned holiday uh, after this uh, Christmas period. I think uh, a lot of us have earned it. So today, because it is just me, I'm going to be painting. This is a bit of a slow burn project I've had on the back burner for a little while now. Uh, we're going to be seeing some of my uh, Roman auxilia, uh, which is something which is very cool. There you go. Kind of get them in frame-ish. You can kind of see what I'm going for there. Nice bright blue uniforms. Really make them stick out was the idea. A couple bright spot colours and some bright shiny metals. Um, so it's good to see a couple of people in chat. Hi, uh, Gargoyles. Um, and yeah, let's get on with it. So it's always weird doing these uh, solo streams because it becomes a bit of a uh, stream of conscience because obviously there's no one to bounce ideas off. So there we go. We kind of get an idea for what I'm working on. Please ignore the uh, stickers. <laughs> Cover up. There we go. Don't tell the boss that I've been painting on my laptop again. He knows. He definitely knows. I came in the other day and there was airbrush paints all over them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. That's good. Hey, uh, Haggard. Hey, Citizen G. Um, nice to see you all in tonight. Um, Haggard, I couldn't possibly confirm or deny that. Um, but either way. Romans are happening. So I've got quite far along with these guys. I'm going to get a little bit closer. Just mess with the support legs for a minute. That might work a tiny bit better. Yeah, that's working. Everything up, so we're going to bring it around here. Yeah, that works quite well, I think. Where the frame sits about there. Yeah, no Marcus tonight because he is uh, currently on holiday, so we gave him a night off. Um, I don't know if we've got any of our hockey regulars, I know we've got some fans in, but his team also is playing exactly right now, uh, which I think factored into the decision, and I don't think we can blame him for that. We uh, we here at Warlord have a lot of hockey fans. Um, so yeah, I've, I've got some toys as well, I've got my uh, nice goofy glasses um, that we might bring out in a little bit. My uh, horrible, horrible geeky glasses um, for close-up painting. I love it when the uh, paints get all clogged up. Until I haven't used this one in a while. Like I said, slow burn at the moment. So slow the nozzle's clogged. Oh yeah, lovely jubbly. And yes, uh, who said that? Sergeant of Wolves, Eastern Archers, absolutely. I think these models are so classic and... I've always thought they were really nice. So for my upcoming SPQR force, I thought, yeah, let's get some uh, Eastern Arches in there. Might make more sense uh, considering what else I've got to have uh, Eastern, but I just love the uh, Western Auxilia uh, models. So that's what we're doing. So. so the way I've done these is on... The skin, we'll do it like section by section. That is um, army paint of barbarian flesh. Um, that's then shaded back with army paint. Oh, paint in my hands already. Um, shaded back with army paint. Uh, um, flesh wash. Re-highlighted with uh, barbarian flesh. Just bring it back under control. And then this, which I'm doing right now, is the final highlight. Just to bring them all together. Is basic skin tone from... Uh, Vallejo. Um, I don't know if it's picking up on the thing, but apologies if that you can hear a bit of background noise. I can hear the neighbours being a bit noisy at the minute. Apologies for that. Somewhat out of my control. <laughs> um, Citizen G, I don't know who you support, but uh, sorry to hear it, unless you're a Penguins fan. Um, but I think they won last night, so boo to that. And for anyone who doesn't know, that obviously gives away who I'm a fan of. Um, another hockey team. But um, <laughs> um Sergeant Imperial of Late Republic. So I am doing Imperial. Um I've always had a massive soft spot for Rome. Um what many might call a Roma boo. <laughs> um less so in recent years because I've been getting more into my World War Two history. Um but god, like ever since I was like uh early teens kind of thing, the 
I think it was Simon Scarrow, his uh, Macro and uh, Cato series of books. I was, re- I was reading them as a kid, well, early teen kind of thing, and I stuck with them for ages. I don't think I ever finished, but I don't know if that series ever finished either, because I think when I stopped reading, there were about 12 books, and uh, yeah, so I don't know if that's done done now. I'm a good author, actually. I think I've read a couple of other his other books, and yeah, not not bad stuff. But that kind of started off my Rome thing, and then, as with everybody ever who's painted one of our Roman miniatures, I absolutely adore the... Let's slightly turn that up a tiny bit so my hands are a bit less in frame. Um... I obviously love uh, HBO's Rome. I think that show is absolute classic and there is nothing not to love about that. So let's get some of the Neelan dudes as well. So I'm quite OCD about when I paint. I like to, um, uh, if I'm doing a unit like this where there's four sculpts, I like to make sure they're in a perfect rotation so I don't end up staring at the same thing too long. Because I I tend to find that if you make it too repetitive, uh, you tend to make mistakes, so I try and avoid that, but, you know, that's probably just me being a bit too fussy. Unthinkable, right? <laughs> so, yeah, obviously, if anyone has any questions, um, please shoot. Um, I'm more than happy to answer those. Or if you've just got any observations, things you'd like to point out, again, let me know. I am here to hear you people's questions, give you some answers. Also, I know some people paint to these, so uh, since we're all painting, uh, let me know what you guys are working on, if you're working on anything. Um, Because I know we do generally have some people who've told me they like to paint with these, and I think tonight will be a nice paint-along. Because generally, I tend to listen to a lot of uh, YouTube vids and stuff like that when I paint. Um, Occasionally podcasts, if anyone I uh, like's uploaded lately. Not very many podcasts I've been really into lately, though. There's a couple I'll dip into, but so many of the good podcasts have been around for, like, ever. You know, proper early days of the internet kind of thing. And, like, by now, it's they almost seem to struggle for, like, content sometimes. Not all of them, like I mentioned. That'd be unfair, but for sure. And, yes, Hobby Hangout today. Um, Marcus, for those who just joined us, is off due to holiday. So you are stuck with me, so... Audience participation is very encouraged. Give me something to talk about uh, because I can only run my mouth for so long before it stops working. <laughs> yeah, for anyone who's uh, messaged into All of Games customer service lately, I'm happy to report we're starting to get the inbox back under control. Um, over Christmas, we had massive amounts of tickets, way more than we could handle. Um, so we're starting to eat through that backlog now. I think the oldest ticket's only a couple of days old now, which is better than we were a couple of weeks ago, which is nice for if anyone has any uh, issues or comments that they have to pass on. So that's nice, Guy That is the day job. And yeah. We could really do a Warlord podcast. I know that there is a podcast, but I think... The issue with doing an everything podcast is that would require a player who plays everything. <laughs> and uh, we do over 10 games now. You know, if you just class the big four, which for me, Bolt Action, Hail Caesar, Pike and Shot, to be an expert on all of those, that's a lot of ground to cover. And you're adding our smaller systems on top of that. You know, we've got three naval games now. We've got... Um, uh, two sci-fi games, uh, three if you count Strontium and Dread as separate ones. So it really does build up. So I'd never expect a everything. Oh yeah, I'm the Red Skies, an everything podcast, unless we had a uh, consistently cycling uh, crew, which then makes it hard to get a uh, regular crew at the best of times. So it, it might be something that we could do in the future, but right now, like the same reason with the... Uh, same thing with the Twitch. We're currently, uh, me and Marcus know World War Two more than we know most things. Um, so there's some things we generally don't touch, but that is just part of how it goes, I think. It's looking nice. Yeah, no, I saw the uh, Blood Red Skies. 
digital. I've uh, known that's been out oh, in the works for a little bit now, but um, it's good to see that that's uh, finally in the works and ready to go. But I think that could be a fantastic little seller. And most importantly, another another way for Blood Red Skies to really get out there to a uh, large audience. Obviously, now we've got the Airfix game, uh, which you know I think is going to help a lot more. I don't want to say casual gamers, but people who wouldn't have considered wargaming before uh, coming into the hobby potentially, because um, scale models and war games, you know, it's a little bit of a mark in the sand. And I think Airfix is a good place for well, both hobbies tend to pick up beginners because you know Airfix and the one seventy two ranges they're such a catch-all thing you find them in a lot of like toy stores still even these days kind of thing um which i think really expands their um uh availability so now that we've got that and then on top of that the video game which is you know the media these days you know everyone well most people play video games i think you know collectively it makes more money than uh the tv and film market by country miles um i don't know how that scales up if you include things like netflix so don't quote me on that one but you know so i think that's gonna be a really good way to uh potentially find new players and obviously for the existing players especially at the moment or for people who live in um uh, more remote places or people who don't have a local player group i think it's gonna be a fantastic example because you know there are people out there who you know buy the models and uh paint them just for the sake of painting them because they enjoy that side of things. But they might not have a local player group. I know a couple of people who are like that. So I think having the gaming aspect on the digital side of things, yeah, I think that's going to completely change the game. Right, zoomy, zoomy glasses. And yeah, we could potentially do that with the podcast, but again, finding the right people, finding people who are interested, and getting everything sorted. There's definitely one to consider. I wouldn't mind joining in on something like that, but right place, right time, and all that. There we go. Oh, that's much better. So I got my uh, lovely, lovely glasses on for zooming in. <laughs> Just kind of going to do the faces now, uh, the uh, fiddliest bit, so I like to do these right. I like to tend to uh, do the fingers while I'm here as well, so I've painted the arms and any other exposed large bits of skin, and then just go back in and paint finger by finger. Some people will probably dry brush these, but dry brushing is good for some stuff. I think it's a little bit messy for detail stuff like this, personally, but obviously everybody paints uh, the way they paint. A couple of people were saying they love the uh, airfixy stuff. Yeah, I, th I was much the same. It's not like my... It wasn't the thing I'd say that got me into this side of the hobby. Um... But it was definitely the first exposure I had to modelling. Took me a while to catch up to wargaming. Um, but that's another story. <laughs> that was me trying to find a video game and hearing a shop called Games Workshop and being, huh, I wonder if they sell uh, video games. Turns out they didn't, and here I am uh, 20 years later. Funny how it goes. <laughs> but yeah, I can't remember what we made. I know it, had, it was pretty big so i'd want to say about 148 scale if our memory serves and that was probably uh it definitely had one of the tiger mouths underneath it as well not that that narrows it down a huge amount but i do remember that detail but as of many people my memory of my childhood isn't fantastic certainly not 2020 <laughs> yeah it's looking very nice and the other thing because these guys are for uh SPQR, I don't have to worry about um, big units, so I can really afford to put the detail work in on uh, small bits like this, which is a nice luxury, really, because 
uh, yeah, I've got a couple of systems that I play, so uh, I don't have time to put necessarily this much detail into every model I ever paint, like especially for things like your uh, uh, Napoleonics and stuff, where you've got giant armies being carted around the tables. If I put this much effort into the individual rank of file, I don't think I'd ever have an army on the table. Or it means I'd never be able to paint all action again, <laughs> because I wouldn't be able to find the time. So um, having a bit of a case of you know, picking your battles and uh, working from there, really, and then figuring out where you want to invest your time. And these guys, yeah, they're, they're worth the time investment. They're cool. That's what we got in the chat. Da -da -da -da. Okay, let's just tweak that a little bit. So, as far as I can tell, the BRS game is a pretty straight conversion from the um, uh, tabletop game. Um, I've not played it yet, um, and looking at the... F mostly going off what I've seen of the thing, kind of looks like this level of um, conversion that you saw with, like, the Space Hulk games and stuff like that. Pretty similar. Well, I think Hero Quest had a similar one as well. Very true to the original sort of thing, and uh, going from there. There we go, Attack Max saying, um, a lot of uh, painting and collecting, but not too much gaming. And that's the other thing with people, um, you know, were playing from the computer screen. You can... I'm just going to tweak those, you can see the painted examples, the finished ones. Um, you can a bit more easily find players, especially when it's a worldwide uh, game. I think it was only about my second or third time using these glasses as well. It takes a bit of getting used to, but they are decent. When you need all the fiddly detail. Does this mean I'm going to be painting the eyes? Still no. No point for that. Maybe a couple. Maybe I'll try one and see how it goes. Yeah, they're really looking nice, actually. It's starting to come to life a bit. I don't know how many hours I've spent on the individual models here at this stage, but yeah, they're pretty far along in the painting process, which is uh, nice. Yeah, not much going on past uh, this sort of thing. Um, obviously, with the lockdown here in the UK, it's been pretty all hands off deck. So, um, yeah, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of working from home and stuff like that. We go in occasionally, but we're trying to minimise the contact and everything like that. And we have some staff in the building on the customer service side of things, but not many. So it's uh, ticking over. I think the order side's doing well. Not many delays on uh, actually shipping stuff out, which is nice, um, especially for anyone who's got orders processing. Uh, we're starting to get through that backlog as well, because, you know, Christmas meant a lot of orders. And then we had some sales around then as well, which added to the carnage. But hey, who doesn't like cheap toy soldiers? Sometimes that's all you need. Dread to think what this would look like if I didn't spin my paints <laughs> back in the olden days when I had no idea what I was doing. And just slapping paint on straight, straight out of the pot or the tube. This would have looked disgusting with the uh, glasses on. Middle school teacher there. I just finished up some Soviet ski troops in 172. It's a weird one to see in 172. Cool units, of course. It's 
probably Zvezdrum would be my guess, but, uh... But yeah, like, that's a, uh, interesting one. I, mean, I used to do a lot of 172, like, a lot of the, uh, cool old uh, fixy stuff, um... I can't remember what the name of the game was, but there was a game that was designed to work in 172 that our, uh, couple guys at our old club used to play. Not a bad little system, to be honest. Basically, proto bolt action. Um, completely different mechanics. One thing I did like about it, it had a really low kill count, which I thought a bit more accurate to reality. You know, in a kind of average engagement, you don't see that many uh, casualties usually. So um, I thought it was quite interesting. I think it was when you hit like 20% casualties, you had to start taking tests. Um, so those scenarios where, you know, your, your tank could be causing carnage, but because your basic infantry was getting beaten up, um, you'd still lose the games, which I, I thought was pretty interesting. A bit more close to life kind of thing. Like, people who are suggesting the names, quite possibly. It was a long time since I played that one. Um, Mike's got a question about Victory at Seas released. Uh, yeah, shoot. Um, I don't know if I'll definitely know it, but I'll be more than happy to uh, attempt an answer for you. So, yeah, that's looking good. Right, back on to regular glasses before my eyes fall out of my head. A tiny little grab of that, just for the teeth. Yeah, that's looking good. I'm going to do the Beige on Scabbards next. So, Mike, I've seen we'll be able to buy the ships from the fleet boxes as individual models. Any idea when? No. <laughs> In a nutshell, um, I think basically everything that is at the stage where I know the plan, um, it's already on pre-order. Um, so if it's not announced yet, then I don't have the uh, tools to check out how far it's uh, away it's going to be. But it shouldn't be too long. Um, but I, I really can't go specific on that one because I'm not sure. Um, and again, obviously, depending on what the uh, cast room's already dealing with would probably affect that time frame. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Yank middle school teacher. Funny, I think I had some old Airfix figures that have been sitting in my closet for 30 years and started painting the World War II infantry, Soviets, World War One US, and World War One British infantry. Oh, nice. It's weird how sometimes projects just jump out at you, stuff that's been sat around forever, and then one day you go, you know what, I'm going to paint these guys. Kind of like these, I guess. And then again, anyone who follows my blogs has been knowing that I've been working on some other stuff at the moment, but... I like to keep it fresh. Don't get too too stuck <laughs> in one thing. Ooh, I don't. I'm afraid, uh, young middle school teacher. That's the one game I've never uh, played. Um, nothing, nothing against it, of course. Uh, I started after its release. Um, but bear in mind, I've been with Wallard for about a year and a half, so um, I've just not got around to playing any of it. Uh, Sergeant, uh, uh, for Victory at Seas, does the main rules cover the Mediterranean theatre? Um, yes. So I think there's going to be some scenarios which extrapolate on this sort of thing. But you've got the, um, army lists to it. I mean, God, what would be the main ones? Uh, Kriegsmarine, Regia Marina, and... Uh, obviously, the Royal Navy. Um, those have all got full lists in there, so you'll have the relevant ships that kind of uh, fought in that uh, war zone. There's almost certainly going to be some scenarios because there is a lot of the hardback rulebook given over to scenarios. So I'd be stunned if there wasn't some about um, uh, the Mediterranean theatre. Um, but I, off the top of my head, can't exactly remember. But yeah, there's there's going to be something, I'd imagine. At the very least, you've got the relevant uh, Navy lists. Didn't even catch that one, Mike. Too caught up in my own little world. <laughs> Never paint and talk. 
never paint and talk. You'll say silly things on the internet. Uh, Haggard, how are you going to base them? So these are getting a pretty normal Northern Europe um, design on bases. The plan is to make them look uh, like they are stationed in Britain to match my other ones that I've already done. Let me drag a picture for you. I think they're currently featured on the front page of Warlord. So yeah, they are getting based like that. Whoops. Because that was the uh, unit of spears that I've already finished. I'm really happy with those how those came out. Because originally they were going to be yellow, and then I had some issues making the decals work on that background. So um, in the end, I just went. Oh, I'm going to change it completely. And uh, now they are bright blue turquoise, which I think pops. I am in love with this colour scheme. I think it's one of the nicest ones I've ever put together. And yeah, I think they're going to look real good when they're uh, all done and on the tabletop. Because uh, nice bit of contrast as well with the green and the blue. Um, not always a colour combination I like, but um, yeah, something a bit different. Especially with turquoise, I think you can get away with it with the green a bit better. I hate blue and green together in a lot of contexts. Um, I, a lot of the time I think it completely jars, but I think with this kind of blue, it's already got quite a bit of green in it, so it doesn't really jar in me, so big fan of that. Yeah, not necessarily... Sarmatians, just a mixed force of uh, auxilia in Britain was the plan. Uh, I always thought the uh, auxilia was a tiny bit more interesting than the basic Romans, but that's uh, that's a me thing. I think I've always liked the way we've um, uh, designed them, and you know, the other people have designed them. I'm sure there's an influence coming in from some artworks and stuff like that, um, which warlords picked up the cues from. But, uh, I, yeah, I think they look great, especially with this colour scheme. And I get bored of red. A lot of people paint the Romans red, but I've, we've all seen it enough at this point. So, uh, I think something a bit different. So, bright blue turquoise is what we have gone for. Mostly builds one seven hundredth scale in particular. <laughs> I completely get that, um, Yank Middle School, because it depends on the army. Like this one's, I'm happy to go a little bit crazy with, but something like my Africa Corps, they've been not initially. The initial wave was a little bit creative, but nowadays I'm starting to catch up on. I've got to get the uniforms right, got to get all the details in there and all that sort of thing. So I, I, I feel the uh, modelling syndrome. <laughs> yellows and greens, that would look cool on them actually. I like the uh, yellow and green's a really nice complementary colour. So that one gets a thumbs up from me. No strong opinion on Pompeii. <laughs> or Pompey, I don't know. I don't do the Latin. Oh, he's been terrible at languages. I didn't that made to do French at uh, secondary school, but uh, never caught up with that one. Awful at uh, other languages. Some might say awful at English, but that's up to debate. That's as good as it's going to get. Any plans for Roman Lorica Segmentata Cavalry? Not as far as I'm aware. I've not heard of anything about that. Um, so yeah, I'm really not sure. Additionally, and I'm not saying they didn't, I don't know if they actually had it. 
Because I know a lot of the Roman cavalry was auxiliary, and I don't know if the auxiliary corps would get hold of these segmentata, so that would be an interesting one to research. Because, like I say, I'm not poo-pooing the idea and saying it definitely didn't happen, but I definitely don't know. I do have some of our Imperial Auxiliary Cavalry in box ready for this force as well. I'm not, <laughs> not bothered building them yet because uh, I am painting these pretty slow so far. <laughs> Stig saying the upside of COVID is I could be spending time playing, I'm spending modeling. Yeah, I think a lot of people are like that. Just need to stop being indecisive about how I'm going to base these guys. Tundra, Winterfall. I think winter bases always look good. There's such a thing as too much winter bases because I know a lot of people do them, and sometimes it's a little bit ridiculous when every force is doing it. But um, I like them. I, I don't think they ever look bad. Sometimes they just look a little bit overdone, in my opinion. Um, obviously, it depends on what force you're doing specifically. That's very specific on the uh, colour palettes for the um, Skytrex ship. Wow. Yeah, I'm not that deep yet. Possibly with the tank modelling. I get pretty fussy when I'm, when I'm doing my tanks. I know that much. <laughs> Got about a lot of the uh, ammo MIG paint sets. So those are pretty good for that sort of thing. Um, get you the right tones. And I know there's a million one out there for the uh, naval games as well. I think life colour, as far as I'm aware, seem to be the best one for the naval side of things. Can't say I'm certain, but I've seen a couple of people recommend those ones for your ship-based games. see a lot of love for them, to be honest. I mean, five armies of Soviet, that sounds about right. You do need lots of them. <laughs> you can never have too many riflemen, Stig. Like, uh, I'm currently technically on one Soviet army, but I'm fast approaching technically two, because half of them have uh, a different basing scheme, because some of them are designed specifically for Stalingrad, and some of them are specifically just generic infantry. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Oh, I've got some winter tanks as well, so... Yeah, who knows where this madness will end with my Soviets. My current brainchild with them is uh, um, a force that s tries to make more out of um, anti-tank grenades. So it's any LMG is stripped out and in place the... Um, any points saved on anti-tank grenades. So a lot of basic infantry with rifles running around... And that's simply Kate, because I tend to find I do assault an awful lot with my infantry, with or without the um, anti-tank grenades. So I think it'd just be a really effective way to just basically maximise my play style with the Soviets, really. Um, and I don't think you see too many of them. I think they're a little bit too expensive for most players. Because two points a model, that's, that's a bit steep. But if you are like me and you already make points room for LMGs, if you just swap them around, suddenly it's actually not that bitter a pill to swallow. Because, you know, a 10-man infantry unit now costs 120 with the um, anti-tank grenades. So it's it's not too extreme. So I like it. So that's probably my next army list for the Soviets for action next time I get a chance to play. That reminds me of a tournament potentially coming up in the... Uh, in the summer, because hopefully by then we might be some semblance of normal, so we are working to assume that hopefully we might be able to do it. And um, quickly looking at the chat, uh, Sergeant asks, Mounted Legionaries acting as Dragoons. Now that's a new one on me. That would be a cool sound models, actually. Like I say, no idea if we're going to do it, or if there's any plans to do it, but I agree, that would look very cool. We're doing some of the fiddly work now as well. Trying to get all the uh, notches and uh, 
bits of banding on their uh, bendy bows. So the idea for the tournament that I've had, because it does, one day is regular bolt action, and then the second day is nothing but tank war. I was thinking I kind of want to do a uh, late war American tank war force. Because one, I think, tabletop wise, the Hellcats are obscenely good for their points. 150 points, uh, 155 regular at basic. Um, 165 with Recky, that's... Okay, now we're getting pretty good. And then uh, I like to give them an HMG as well, because in a tank war scenario, that means one extra pin a turn on a different vehicle. So originally the idea is, you know, how many Hellcats can I spam? That was the that was the long and the short bit. And as I've gone on, I've kind of thought, mm, okay, the only problem with that is if you just take Hellcats, everything's open top, so everything's going to be taking pins from uh, hull mounted S uh, LMGs and MMGs. If there's any infantry kicking around, then rifle fire is going to pin them. And overall, I think it's actually going to be quite easy to just pin the army out. So I thought to myself, well, okay, what else do the Americans have that I could kind of supplement a bunch of Hellcats with? And the idea I've come to in this, I managed to squeeze it in under the points limit of uh, 1500, is three veteran Sherman 76s. So they're not the most. Um, armoured tank in the game, they've not got any like particularly snacky specials. Big reason I wanted them is um they thanks to their veterancy and the gyro stabilized rules, they have um they can move and fire. So suddenly the Hellcats being really vulnerable and stuff like that, they can find something to hide behind some cover to get in and generally let that be their armour. Meanwhile, the Shermans can kind of cover hop, and they don't care if they're moving. So the Hellcats just kind of do their thing. They can reposition if they need to, but ideally put them in a place where they can uh, just get a good line of sight and tear stuff up, really, <laughs> um, while the Shermans go and do a maneuver warfare as a uh, section. So that's kind of the battle plan I have for that one. And I think it should work pretty well because a lot of the people at the tournament I'm expecting to possibly see some more big stuff, you know? Your um, tigers and that kind of stuff. Which obviously is, you know, pretty scary. But I think this way I should have six guns on the table that can quite merrily hurt them. And... On top of that, oh, he's chipped. There we go. On top of that, I think I should out dice most people as well. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes, because uh, tank war is not something that you see played very often, especially at the competitive level, or at least where I've seen. Um, so I think it's going to be new. So I think, yeah, lots of um, lots of opportunities there, and I think. Veteran Shermans, not something you see very often, so um, I'm looking forward to that. And the other thing with the Hellcats, I made a point to put uh, HMGs on all of them. Which is the downside to putting HMGs on most vehicles is they become open tops. They're always open tops, so I really don't care, so I might as well get those extra shots. I think HMGs on open topped vehicles are way more versatile than uh, on normal vehicles. Oh, and obviously, they're recce as well, so you can use them to. Uh, Tempt shots out. So especially if you've got a, a force that's um, got less dice than you, if they want to sacrifice shots on the Hellcats, suddenly they're potentially wasting dice for something they literally cannot hit. At which point the Hellcats can shoot them back when they are distracted. So I always imagine the Shermans are probably going to be the prize targets because I'm going to play them way more aggressively, and then the Hellcats come around, do sneaky, sneaky stuff, and generally. Be annoying is the plan. So I think uh, I mean that should be an interesting little list. There we go. Yeah, that too. Uh, Stig saying there that the gyro stabilizers are a nightmare against the casement uh, kind of vehicles. Yeah, because they can't turn, they can't deal with it, and then you get stuck, have to move, they're harder to engage. So I think there's really something to this. 
because if someone takes a lot of Stugs nice and cheap compared to other things or, you know, other um, casement uh, vehicles, then I think I might be able to give them a nasty surprise. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty looking forward to this because, like I say, it's something different. You very rarely see competitive tank war. So, as for the main list, I got a thousand points to play with and I have no idea what I want to take. Um, I've got plenty of armies to choose from at this stage, but I don't know. I do not know. Maybe I'll surprise people and take my Americans. Uh, and then I've got one cohesive force. That could be cool. Because um, I've not taken them to a tournament either. And I don't really know what's good in a uh, competitive scenario for um, the Americans. I know they've got their um, national characteristic, which in my opinion is the best national characteristic in the game, the uh, move and fire. So I know they've got that going for them. But actually writing a tournament list for the Americans, I'm not really sure what to go for. I think possibly a lot of uh, small squads with BARs, maximize your dice, maximize your uh, mobile firepower, uh, many units then to take uh, the objectives. Um, then past that, nothing really jumps out. Like, there's a couple good units, but most of their like units are generic. You know, like, nothing that fancy about a lot of them. They are just regular infantry or veteran infantry armed with... Rifles, SMGs, or automatic rifles, so... I don't know what i do on that front, but... Eh, I'm tempted. So, like I said, just for the uh, move and fire, I think that rule's pretty big. Pretty involved discussion there about... Um... <laughs> tank, not tank, uh, ship uh, paint schemes going on there. I wish I had something to contribute, but I have no idea. So, I don't think I do want to slap another highlight on there. I'm not quite happy with that. So, I think on to the metals next. Yeah. So, I've already painted the steel. So, next up, we are going for. The brassy, goldy looking stuff on the uh, helmets, generally the trim. There's not too much of it, but I think that's really going to stand out. So. Generally, not the biggest fan of the. Uh, Citadel paints, but I do like their uh, italics. Credit where it's due. <laughs> a lot of paints metallic coverage isn't great, but those generally do have a job. There's a couple of theirs from their range which are rubbish. Generally speaking, they're not bad. And there's a couple of paints I really like, so that's what I'm using at the moment. So these were based up with. Bright gold, is it? Greedy gold from uh, Army Painter, washed with flesh wash to bring them back and give a little bit of shading. And that would be in uh, highlighted. With, I think it's called Retributor. But I mean, similarly, would be bright gold. It's all about personal preferences on that front. Ooh, spilled some paint there. Okay. Or I lose where that bit is. Fix that quickly. That's better. At least it wasn't on a bit with a blend. That would have been a nightmare. Yeah, that's looking good. So yeah, just the detail work at this stage, you know, working on your scabbards and stuff like that. I think we are very close to finished on these, and then might even get a tiny bit of basing done in this stream at this rate. I'm not certain, though. We'll see. Definitely, definitely not going to rush it, though. There is no reason to rush. Possibly the only reason to rush it is I've not had dinner yet. But that can wait. That can wait.
Unfortunately, my blog's been really quiet lately. Um, I was still in painting and working and stuff. I've just not had much to post recently. A lot of things that have been taking a long time to finish or and stuff like that. So there's been a very quiet page lately, which is unfortunate. So every time I click on it, the uh, um, analytics get very angry at me, telling me that I'm losing subscribers, losing out. And I'm like, shut up. This is just a... Uh, just for fun page, I'm not trying to monetize this, so go away, but no. Every time, flashing red, analytics are down. But we ignore them, because I couldn't give a monkeys. Mike, yeah, I'm kind of similar, like, um, these days Vallejo is absolutely my go-to set of paints. I just think they're the best kind of war game stuff like this. They're convenient, their coverage is good, they're not too expensive, and I, I hate paint pots, I really do. I found that certain designs, and you know who I'm talking about, they don't close properly and then they dry out really quick, so that drives me nuts. I think... For that reason alone, I much prefer Vallejo. I just think they're so much better. And Army Painter, like, I prefer Vallejo over Army Painter. Again, I think that's, uh, that's possibly a personal preference. But for me, Vallejo is the tip top. If I'm doing airbrush and stuff, then ammo and stuff like that come into the mix. But that's, that's almost a whole other bit set, of, <laughs> set of rules kind of thing. So I kind of separate that out. No, I've never played a game of uh, SPQR in my life, despite painting a force for it. This is all entirely perspective, which, uh... So it'll be fun when we're allowed to get some games in. I'll try out a new game. Obviously, there should be something that we're streaming for that as well at some point. Because, uh, we'll be wanting to get back to games soon. As possible, really, so... Again, no idea on a date for that, because that's up to the government. But... I, I want to get games in. I think the game streams generally do really well. Because that's a point. I've got people in here, I and mean, I've seen a lot of regulars around. What do we think of the game streams overall? Are they something that we want to continue with? Are they um, skips for you? Do you prefer them to the talkies? Do you prefer the talkies? Is it something else? Let me know. Because, like I say, I, I like doing the games, unsurprisingly, because I get to play a game. But... <laughs> yes, Stig, I've been uh, busy with a big boy that I can't show. But yes, it was definitely white and orange colour scheme. Which changes for that force, funnily enough. I've got this thing where like the elites invert their colour scheme and stealth forces um, uh, make it go black and white instead of uh, white and yellow. Whereas like elites go orange with white highlights. Uh, which, yeah, it's just a bit of fun to kind of differentiate stuff, make some pop out on the tabletop a little bit more. <laughs> God, I love our models, but sometimes there's a lot of detail on them. Doesn't help with the speed painting. <laughs> Weird thing to complain about too much detail in a miniature. But there we go. Sometimes you just want to get stuff on the table. But not like these. These look good. So I think uh, some of these, obviously, I think all of these are actually Hail Caesar miniatures that I just rebased. Because uh, I don't think we do any auxiliaries in boxes for SPQR at the moment, which is a shame. Because I've had a couple chips on these. I wouldn't actually mind these in Warlord resin. <laughs> I think that would be a convenient way of uh, storing and handling them. But, you know, they're still really nice in the metal. Because I know they're ancient sculpts. Well, I think they're some of the earliest things Warlord did. 
um, back in the original like Romans uh, release era. So he's probably about 10, 12 years old. They're getting on a bit. They still look nice. I'm still a big fan. Oh, nice to hear people uh, playing um, a little bit of Cruel Seas at schools. That should be uh, a lot of fun. Better than normal classes, I bet that. <laughs> We had one very, very, very short-lived games club at my school, but it, it never really took off. I don't think any of the teachers were that invested. So at one point it was like student-led, and very briefly it was teacher-led, but it never got anywhere because no, nobody wanted to organise it. So I would have appreciated that. God, that one's dried out. Ooh. Could use that one to fill in gaps in the road. <laughs> I really need to play a lot more of everything. I haven't painted a single miniature for Cruel Seas. <laughs> like, I've never done it. All Victory at Sea. Now, Victory at Sea, I have got painted. Um, not got a huge fleet, but I think at this point now, I just need to put the final highlights on all my core ships from uh, the starter set. So at some point, I'll get those done, and uh, we'll get some more Victory at Seas, because I'd be happy to see that. I think me and Marcus both want to do some uh, black powder on the stream with the new American Civil War stuff. Um, so that should be good at some point, because uh, I think everyone's pretty excited to see that one. I mean, it's obviously very good to see the uh, representation of the uh, other games as well. Because uh, around the office, we've got a lot of uh, bolt action players, but... There's a lot of other games out there. We know that one. Now this year as well, and this is a pledge I know a lot of people have made, but I'm so far half a month into the year, sticking to it. I'm trying to buy less models, is what I'm saying this year. I do genuinely want to start hitting some of the backlog. There's projects that I've picked up, got really into, and then because of new releases or just new shiny toys that I wanted to pick up, that I never really got around to finishing. So it was around uh, Christmas where I got some stuff for Christmas and then bought some stuff for Christmas money. I was just looking at it going, I am never going to be able to get all of this done, especially if I keep buying new stuff. So the plan is to focus on what I got. Um, so that will be continuing. So I want to get this SPQR force done pretty sharpishly so we can start on this. Um, because I think I'm allowed to say this, if I'm not, well, I might not be here next week. But um, I think the plan was me, Ollie, um, Charlie and Marcus were planning on doing some streamed games of uh, SPQR at some point. Um, we've all got forces for it, so we thought it was a good fit for, uh, for the stream. Because it's quite a quick play game as well, you know. Nothing that goes on for too long. And at this point, I've got the expertise to set up the camera and all that. So I could show like Ollie and uh, Charlie how to get it all set up and uh, running and stuff like that. So yeah, a good chance that'll be happening, which I'm uh, looking forward to. Nice to see those guys. How big of a stash do I have? <laughs> well, um, if you just count boxed kits, they are stacked um, in two rows over in the storage corner. So if you say like each hand is like a default like bolt action box or like a box Soviet infantry, box German infantry, it's about ten to fifteen boxes on each side. So that's about twenty five unbuilt boxes of plastics, um, and then blisters, a buttload of blisters as well. So uh, it'll, it'll take a while, but some of that as well is genuine storage. So people know I play quite a bit of Frostgrave. Um, Stuff like that, they give you 20 models in a box. So it's really good value, but realistically, for a uh, 
a game, you need about, well, you're limited to 10 models. So two of those are going to be your wizards, and then you build eight up to be your team. So I've got, like, a couple boxes over there that are Frostgrave that I've used a couple of the sprues, built a couple of the guys, and then just left the box in storage. So it's not as bad as it sounds, because a couple of boxes like that where I've got, like, half a built Gar army that I've half painted and then dropped that project because I was busy um, for Antares and stuff like that. So, yeah, it, it does find its way to build up. And I got some stuff that was originally given to me for releases that are... Never came to fruition, at least on the Twitch. Things like um, airfix kits for Big Red Sky, which didn't have time to get those kits ready uh, for the live. Which is a shame because, like, they're really nice. At some point, we'll get them done. I've got um, a BF one hundred nine trop that I want to do for my Africa core. A bunch of minutes of uh, rarer vehicles from Perry's. They sell the two five four artillery observation vehicle. So I got that and stuff like that that we don't sell. Um, so yeah, I got a lot of stuff to be working on. And like I say, I think people who follow my work, or like two of you out there, um, <laughs> I think it should be a good year for that sort of thing. So I think we're going to see a nice varied spread. Because I don't like to sit on something for too long. I think that's another thing that encourages me to buy a lot of kits. Is I don't want to sit on something for too long. But at this point, I've got so many things bought that I can project hop quite merrily and not have to buy anything new to get a new flavour. Like, this year alone, I was doing uh, my other armies for other games. Now I'm jumping back onto this. And, you know, that's still... I've got units for the Americans, the Africa Corps, the Soviets, all those ready to work without having to buy anything. So that's five rotations right there, so God knows how many months that would be. And by the time I've done... If let's say hypothetically I do like a month on each before getting bored or wanting to try something else, um, that's five months of stuff, and I reckon by the end of that I'll be back around to the start and happy to work on the original ones again. So yeah, I think this is going to be a pretty busy year. I mean, already there's new armies I want to do. I was reading um, campaign uh, Anglo-Canadian sectors and thinking to myself, I really want to do a... Uh, Brit force for this at some stage. So uh, even with the uh, pledge to try and buy a little bit less this year, I um, already got the temptation nipping in because there's a couple of things I want to do there. And then, of course, tournaments. If we're allowed to do tournaments again, that will influence it because, you know, maybe I'll need a unit for the horrible, horrible lists that I need to take um, or want to take more likely. <laughs> Yeesh, yank. That's a uh, that's a good good backlog to be getting on there. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're chewing through. I think I've already made pretty good progress this year. There's some things that I've been sat on for a while. I've uh, started making plans for. But there's always another kit. Always more. I've also been thinking about uh, writing another article at some point. I don't know when that will be coming out, but I want to do an article for the web store at some point that I've got an idea for. So keep an eyes peeled for that. Nothing too deep on this one, just quite a lot of photos behind it as well, because I've got them so I can finally deploy those and I think now is a good time to share the article so I've had the idea for ages and ages well I say idea I've had the content for a long old time I've just been sitting on it not getting around to it but I think at some point I should really write that oh. let's see what next so got all the white done got all that done I'm gonna leave that there God, these really are almost done what have we got yeah, I don't want to add another highlight there, that would overdo it. Yeah, next stop studio. <laughs> I wish. Not even that good yet. A long way to catch.
a lot of new, uh, metaphorically here, but a lot of new faces at Warlord at the moment. Because we got the, uh, we got a new, or two new people working on the social media and uh, digital marketing side of things. I don't know if they're watching, but it's nice to see some new faces. Met both of them now. Um, so you'll be seeing a lot of their stuff in the, in the near future, I imagine. They're uh, both very good people. So our new direct digital, I've not seen her very much. Um, briefly said hi in a group chat. But uh, the other one, he seems pretty nice. Been hanging out with him a bit when I was in the office before the most recent lockdown. I had to break it to him that there was no uh, food stores nearby. Because we're in a bit of a middle of nowhere kind of area. And he forgot to bring lunch. I was like, buddy, you ain't finding anything in walking distance. Or driving distance. I'm like, eh, not conveniently. <laughs> So he uh, adopted the way of the takeout like the rest of us. Yeah, good. Yeah, maybe we'll get on to basing. I don't think I've got anything left to do on these. Not that my basing's anything particularly fancy. I've got a big box of dirt down beside me here and some super glue in the, uh, in the drawers. No, I'm nothing fancy at all with my basing. I just like to make sure it's a bit layered, so I tend to use two different types of static grass and um, at least one type. Oh, I should have a hair, but I'm not Where was I? There. So yeah, I really like to split up the bases. So I tend to put like quite a lot of rocks and things like that to uh, break it up and make it look fancy, which I think works really well for that sort of thing. Um, I mean, I like, I like tufts as well. I think tufts look really good on bases. I used to not use very many of them. I used to keep my bases super simple, but I think they are, you know, a good base is so easy to do relative to how hard painting is or how time consuming it is. It's you're almost selling yourself short if you don't put a fancy base on because it just brings it to life. Uh, you know, a good model on a bad base kind of overall generally doesn't look. You know, it's not going to get propped up by a bad base, but a average model on a really nice base looks great. So I'm um, big fan of the uh, uh, basing stuff. How do I send? Da -da 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 -da. So I'm catching up on the chat a little bit. Bear with me a moment. Thanks to Corsi's. Nice, nice. Oh, nice, Sergeant. Don't see the studio people too often, especially at the moment. Well, that's, a, that's a good connection to have. How do I send a private message to the guy at Warlord? That, um, <laughs> you don't really. Um, so if you need, to, if it's anything work-related, info at Warlord Games, um, or I guess uh, to my blog, but generally I try to keep my work and <laughs> um, play separate, so I tend to keep my like, personal Facebook pretty closed off. But yeah, if it's directly for me, um, that would be um, my blog. You should be really cheeky and try to sneak into Pokemon's Bar for lunch. Yeah, we tried that already. Um, they're currently not serving because of the, uh, <laughs> the uh, pandemic, but we did try to pop in for a drink on uh, one day. Like I say, like, I got buddies from workshop. It's not like it is a completely closed off system where we're uh, skirmishing in the car parks and uh, constantly having fights. <laughs> Guy goes getting excited there for the Civil War stuff. Nice. I've, I've not painted any of mine yet, but I've got them all built now. Got them all built, which is nice. Takes some time, but they're very nice models put together. Very satisfying. And he's got to be in chat. I haven't got photos saved, unfortunately. But someone sent me. Um, I don't know, Bingo goes actually. Um, 
the models, he broke them off the individual uh, strips of ten. They looked great. Really liked them. Ooh, some old legionnaires. Very nice. Right back to the start of Warlord. Yeah, Gargos, those look great. I'm very impressed with those. Yank, I'm not sure we've got to that one yet. Um, I definitely didn't answer it. Um, hopefully, whoever has answered it, or when it gets answered, will uh, pass it on to me or Marcus so we can uh, show it off on the stream. <laughs> I wish, Amish. That'd be, uh, that'd be a lot of fun. Ideally not in the... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I don't, wouldn't imagine that would be the easiest conversion, but they, like, the final result looked fantastic. I was super impressed with them. I was like, I have not got the patience to be doing that myself, but uh, seeing someone else doing it, very nice. Very nice indeed. Since you mentioned it now. Are you going to have Sherman at the gate? Um, I, it's been suggested. Um, I've been told they're quite expensive. <laughs> Since you mentioned his name, can I reference it in the text? Um, sure. I, I don't really know the context, but I don't see that being an issue. Nice. Swedish Army for the Thirty Years' War. Nice. Definitely seeing a lot of variety with this uh, sort of thing. Of pe what people are working on, which is nice to hear. Paint the tops because that's massive stuff. Point. Right, so are they done? What's left? What have I missed? Hair. Missed the hair. Which is the one I'm going to use. That one's slightly dead. Always keep your dead brush. It's very useful for dry brushing and uh, stuff like that. But sometimes you need a small dry brush, so even keep your uh, keep your little brushes when they're half dead, like this one. God knows how many years I've had some of these brushes. Some just don't go away. I was gutted the other day as well. I had a uh, brand new Tamiya brush. It was sat on my painting stand. And um, so the way that I've got it set up, my laptop sits in front of me, um, and I've got two paint racks on either side. And what would happen is one of the paint brushes tipped over out of the paint racks when I closed the um, screen. I broke the brush clean in half. Um, very annoying. I was able to fix it with some super glue, but I don't know how long term fixed it's going to be, which is unfortunate. Been sending Marcus pictures of complete sips for. Ah, yes. So I imagine the reason I haven't been informed of that is he is off this week. So I've uh, I've not seen him or any of the stuff out of his inbox. So at some point those will be passed along, and obviously he's my co-host as well. So he will definitely get those ones passed along. Because uh, it's always nice to show off the uh, community projects as well. Because some very talented people out there in some cool collections and all sorts. Also, I think I'm going to be on watching some telly tonight as well. I need to check if it's still up, but I saw advertised somewhere a show about the 
Boar Wars on um, Boa Boar. I can, ne can never remember which is the right way to say it. But either way, about um, that war on Amazon Prime included with the membership. So I need to check that out because that one, one that I don't know much about, but I'm curious to know about. Um, I saw a short video on it, but I want to go a little bit deeper on that. So it seems like something fun to watch this evening. Maybe, just maybe, stay up a little bit late and watch the uh, Philadelphia Flyers this evening. At least one period, but I don't know if I'll stay up for all three because they start pretty late to begin with. I don't think I want to be up until past 3am on work night. But I'd like to watch at least some of them. Again. Hair's coming along nicely. I didn't want the hair to be too eye catching on these just because I didn't want to take away from the overall brightness of the um, uh, model because they, they're pretty bright colour schemes. I wanted there to be some negative space. But, so I've uh, given these black, black, black hair. So I'm only doing very slight highlights here with the grey just to give them a little bit of definition. So if you look closely, you can see what you're looking at. I really don't want the hair to be eye-catching at all. We're just saying because they have some very curly hair. <laughs> and a couple of good mustaches. Archer, yes, sir. Watched that a lot a couple of years ago. I haven't seen that for ages. And I'm uh, waiting for one of my favourite shows, The Expanse, to be finished with a new season. Because I don't think they're done yet. Um, but when that's all done, I want to watch it all as one block. But I hate watching um, one episode and waiting a week these days. I like to just go, give me it all. So I've uh, unfollowed um, anything even vaguely to do with The Expanse on, <laughs> on um, Facebook and stuff like that. So I don't get any spoilers. So I, I can't wait for that show uh, to uh, be finished so I can catch up on season five because that show is one of my favourites. Love that bit. Oh, nice. Working on some boats there from uh, Yanked Middle School Teacher. Big fan of that. Stig, hold your breath. Uh, I don't imagine he'll be winning anytime soon. He is uh, not exactly gifted <laughs> for uh, war games. Doesn't have winning habits, is what we'll say. <laughs> and I don't think he'd mind me saying that. I think he'd agree. <laughs> but I'm talking with the idea of seeing if we can get some other people on as well. Um, for the games and stuff that would allow us to get some different armies different play styles and stuff like that have to think about how we want to organize it and uh, obviously we'd need to get volunteers to stay late but that, that's something i want to do more of going forward so we'll see how that goes like i say i'm a big fan of the games but with only a couple armies each i don't know how long we'd be able to get out of that before it got a little bit samey so i think potentially some new armies on the table at some point which would be nice Yeah, these models are also a little bit of a break from my norm here as well, because I tend to uh, never use white undercoats. But for these, because they're quite colourful, I was like thinking about doing them slightly brighter. So uh, they've got a white undercoat. <laughs> Not too bad. The only problem is sometimes you do find spots where right in the recesses of the model it's shining through because you're white because you missed it on the first pass. Easy enough to fix, just dab some wash or something similar in there, but it is still a pain in the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to call them done. Obviously, other than bases and whatnot, but the painting's done. That's the important bit for now. Hmm. 
Nice. No, that's nice regarding uh, Haggard's comment there about uh, miniatures wading through water. I did see someone at a tournament uh, last January had a British commando army. Um, who was that? I don't remember whose that was specifically. I'm pretty sure I know them, but I don't want to say the wrong name in case I'm not right. But that was really good. So um, I like all the beach effects on the base. It's phenomenal work. The actual models are pretty nice as well, but the basing especially it popped so much. And Stig, yeah, you know, the uh, Neville was working for him, but can't rely on that sort of thing. And I don't like that tactic. I don't like the coming in at the last turn and uh, using flamers and stuff like that. I mean, it's cheap. Put it out. Put it properly. It's got a small enough army. I, I, I don't like playing for draws. I think that's such a boring way to play. But that's me. That's me. Yeah, we're not going too much longer, Sergeant. So uh, have a great evening. Like I say, I'm probably going to go for about another 15 minutes. But there's not really too much left to paint. Because I don't want to start on the basing right now. Because that was going to be a little bit longer. And I'm not adding any more highlights on these guys. But... Yeah, they're definitely coming along. I sure can check and paint the base room Sunny's doing. I think as well, like, another big thing. More types of games on the stream. That's another thing we're pushing for. Um, so that will be something to see as we go along. Obviously, hopefully, with the new uh, digital people as well, we might get some extra help from them. See what plans and schemes they've thought up. Because at the moment, it's just uh, me and Marcus going it alone, largely. Um, if we need anything, we got the help. But, like, actual regular scheduled help and planning and stuff like that, we generally pretty much wing it. Um, <laughs> so uh, it would be good to see some more of that going forward change it up a bit it's weird we're not too far off having done it for a year which is crazy well it's still a bit to go but certainly been going on a while I think we started about May me and Marcus I know uh, Ollie and uh, Charlie were doing it beforehand but they didn't stick it as long as we did <laughs> and again they were mad they were doing two a week which I think's a little bit mental on top of a day job. So we did a couple weeks where we were, well, a couple months where we were doing two a week, and it's, it's brutal. And you run out of things to talk about quite fast as well. So uh, I wouldn't want to do two every week. Not regularly, at least. I don't know if we'll get any other shows on this. Obviously, at one point, we had uh, three streams a week. So it'll be interesting to see if we can get some extra people to uh, fill out some of the other night slots. Because I know as well, we're hoping to move on to um, some other platforms as well. Um, so I think most likely we're going to co-stream on to uh, Facebook as well, see if we can bag a slightly larger audience and uh, see how many other people we can get watching. Because bear in mind, we, we don't do this for, um, or specifically the Twitch, what I'm referring to here. We don't do this side of things for profit. And we're nowhere near big enough to start monetizing the um, this part of the business. So I think moving on to Facebook means that more people will be able to see it, which obviously exactly what we want. Because that, that's the point. This is all about you know, engaging with the community and uh, hearing what they have to say and just, you know, trying to be at least a little bit entertaining. So hopefully we can uh, get some uh, bigger audience figures. Because I mean, the only people thing that people on the Twitch need to be aware of, we're going to still stream to the Twitch. It's just um, we'll be streaming to a social media as well, most likely in this case, Facebook. Um, the only thing that might come up is if we find that we're getting the same amount of viewers on the Twitch, but we're getting like, you know, hypothetically like, 
quadruple the times on the Facebook, then we might end up moving to the Facebook chat client. So obviously, we can only see one chat at a time, but we'll keep you posted on which one will be active at any time. So obviously, we don't want to mute any people. And obviously, we'll be streaming on both platforms as well, because it's all coming from the same base program that we use, which is OBS. I'd be very upset if we stop using OBS because it's the one I know. <laughs> and I uh, like not having to learn new things. I like learning new things, but I don't like having to learn new things. That's a very important difference. Lately, I've been learning a lot about gun development. Uh, watching CNR Arsenal's uh, Guns of World War One videos quite a lot lately. Just finished their Longly and uh, Shortly. Well, I'm in the process of watching the Shortly video. I was watching it uh, just before you know, we went live on the stream, which was fun. Very long winded. Um, not good for uh, possibly the casual viewer, but if you want to learn a lot about it, then it's a, it's a nice deep dive. Oh god, I am very glad we don't have ads. Um, so yeah. <laughs> and yeah, like, um, that's I think one of the big reasons me and Marcus tend to stick together, um, Stig. We, uh, we do have, this is, you know, the, the fake chemistry. So, I, like I say, I want to get some couple other people on to get some stuff, but I don't want to break up the core. So we'd have to figure out a way to do that. So it might be in that every week or two, one of us gets a night off while the other one hosts the stream and plays the game. But I think at a core level, I'd say our part of the Warlord brand is a uh, a double act. So obviously tonight we're mixing it up because Marcus is off and I have the software to run. Um, so I, I tend to do the techier side of things. So it's like, oh, I'll just solo stream. We can enjoy an evening off to watch the Red Wings lose. So um. Yeah, generally, I think it will always be both of us. So, um, obviously, it's been mostly like this the whole time, but if anyone has any uh, questions, uh, please let us know, because I'm saying the 10-minute amnesty is open. I'm just going to move this, because it's, again, not moves. it's in an awkward, awkward place. There we go. So, uh, that's the unit done for painting. And if we'll be able to get a shot in focus of these guys, Right. Do, 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 do. I don't know where it's going to cut out on the focus. About there, I think. So, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with those. I'll uh, post a picture up on my blog when they're all based and finished, finished. But for now, that'll be tonight's painting, I think. So, yeah. Like I say, AMS is open. If you have any weird questions, any off topic questions, please let me know. I'm going to make sure this is closed before I get paint on my sleeves or my nice Warlord hoodie. Which I like this thing. Uh, be brave. Uh, show my face. Is Carthage going to be an SPQR V2? I don't know, actually. I'd hope so. I really do. Because like, I think there's a lot of armies we've not touched on yet that really deserve a little bit of love. Um, Carthage is one of them. I think Egypt, I don't think, currently has a official roster. I think stuff like that would be really good. Um, if we don't have it already, I wouldn't mind... Uh, someone writing it and it gets released. Um, and if SPQR takes off in the big way and, you know, fully catches up to Hail Caesar in, like, player base and stuff like that, we might end up seeing, or I could potentially see, this, is, this isn't confirmation, this isn't, like, definite, but I wouldn't be surprised if we did something like a army list like we do for um, Hail Caesar with the ancient to medieval army list book. So not much background, not much history mostly focused on here is if you want to run this on the tabletop i'd love to see that for an spqr because yeah you know you've got like your dacians gauls uh romans romans twice um i think iberians and stuff like that you got all those but if there's some like weirder nations um or like later nations i think a army list book would be the perfect place to showcase that because um in that context you don't need to like make a whole 
uh, campaign around it. Just if someone happens to have a Viking force, there you go. Here's some rules for Vikings. If you've got a Carthage force, here you go. Here's your Carthage force. So I don't know off the top of my head which armies are in the um, rulebook and which are going to be uh, coming out, uh, which will be missed, basically. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw an army compendium, let's say. So yeah, I, I, I'd like to see it though, because I like Carthage. Not many people sell Carthage miniatures. I know, I think, a Gripper miniatures does a plastic Carthaginian and wider metal range. I can't think of any of them off the top of my head that do it. Oh yeah, Victrix do, yeah. God about Victrix. Been ages since I built any Victrix stuff. But yeah, like, like I say, I think they're cool. Because I can't even remember off the top of my head if we've got um, non-successor Greeks in the uh, SPQR rules. Because, I mean, that... I don't think they've got any models, but, you know, you just, just, just your basic hoplites and stuff. I think that would be another thing that would be worth catching up on. Here we go. Macedonia, Germania, Gaul, Dacia, Caesars, Legions, and Mercenaries. So, yeah, it's just something like your generic Greeks. I say generic, but, okay, your non-Macedonian Greeks. Um would be a really good step as well. So I think there's a lot of places SPQR can and hopefully will grow once the, uh, assuming that the community grows with it. I'm going to look through it now. And like I said, there's a lot of, a lot of cool stuff in general with that, that range. Like, um, when the SPQR Dacians came out, which said the new sculpts for those, I'm so in love with those, especially their uh, heroes box with the was it heroes or nobles? The uh, fellow with the two swords and the really ornate helmet. I think that's such a cool kit because, of course, I can't I can't find it off the website. But yeah, there's some really nice stuff in there. Is, is the point I'm trying to make? So, uh, big fan of those. <laughs> Spartans. I can't remember. I genuinely can't remember. All I've got here is the um, web store. I've not got my rule book on me. Um, and I was going through what we've got uh, boxed product lines for. So maybe I'm misremembering. Maybe the um, there are already rules for those. But if we don't, we should. <laughs> and maybe some medieval stuff as well. I like my medieval war games. But uh, yeah. Do I prefer mass battle rank and flank? Skirmish squads or single figure? Skirmish Stroke Squads. My my favourite game that we sell is Bolt Action by Country Mile. Um, so I think that falls under the... That's very skewed today. There we go. That's better. Um, yeah, this had to kind of sit awkwardly anyway. It kind of got crushed at one point. So it, um, its rim doesn't sit very well unless it's a bit askew on the head. Um, but yeah, Skirmish, definitely. Um I used to play a lot of Warhammer Fantasy, but I've not played that much um, mass battles lately. The only one I play is uh, Black Powder, really, and I've not played that ever. <laughs> I got forced for it, but um, by the time I was starting to get up to brigade strength where I could actually join in on a game, uh, it was already virus season, because um, I finished my cavalry contingent for the first brigade back in like August kind of time. So I've, I've got a brigade ready to go now, um, but I've not had a chance to run them, which is a shame. Um, but yeah, generally I play squad, and the only uh, proper like single figure skirmish game I play is um, uh, Frostgrave. I love Frostgrave. But Frostgrave's very much its own thing. It's it's, it's a bit of an odd duck in the war game world. I think it's cool though. Big fan. Uh, right, I'm going to call it there. We've been going for about an hour and a half. I hope you have all enjoyed. Um, bit of a quieter one today, but that's what happens when it's just me. Um, hopefully I was good by myself. And um, have a great week, everyone. See you around.